specific chart, that means that collectively we can all get back to spirituality in it, in theoretically in its healthiest form. This is what we want to do. We want to heal our connection to God over the course of the next eight years. And we want to remember, this is what this is going to remind us of, is that we are a spirit in a human form. So this is a lot to work with, and it is pretty background going on throughout this whole time. And you've just got to keep in mind, again, Pisces, Virgo, and Gemini, Sag times are going to activate Chiron automatically. So any time, those four times a year, we're going to get engaged with our healing process. And any of that energy in your chart is going to be engaged ongoing for the whole eight-year period. So that's a lot to be dealing with deep, eternal wounds, you know. That's, that's pretty heavy. So we want to give the flow a structure, find a time and place, create some healthy boundaries, do what you've got to do, and then step out of it and keep moving. We don't want to get sucked in. We don't want to hit rock bottom to find God, but very often that's what happens. So just being mindful of the tests that are coming at you and anything that you recognize, honest to God, you have got to choose differently this time. That's how that works. Right now the custom tests are seeing if you really have moved into this new identity and have really set the new goals that are going to support the new identity going forward. And so old you kind of tests are going to come up. And it is vital every time, every time that you make a new decision in the face of an old problem, you're going to gain a, a brick of strength, you know, and just brick by brick, you're going to build your strength back up, which is another Chiron healing process that we can work with, and gain that strength of the new identity so that you can stand on it, so that you don't have to think so hard when these tests come up, but you're looking at it and you're like, oh, that looks familiar, that feels familiar, it sounds familiar, it smells familiar, you know, what are we going to do? So just being mindful that you want to choose differently, especially in the face of things that you recognize, that you know you've seen before, you know you've been through it before, do you really have to go through it the same way you did before? I mean, a lot of these things are repetitive and they come and they go and they come back up, so it is about paying that much attention, but... We don't want to repeat mistakes anymore. That's done. We've got too much to do, and we've got bigger opportunities on deck right now, right now, (laughs) that you want to be able to seize when they're presented to you personally. Now, the other thing and the final thing as we wrap it up is next week, in preparation before we even talk on the 23rd, like I said, Sun's going to move into Taurus, Chiron's going to move into Pisces. Those are the biggest movements for the week. But while those two are there, Venus is the star of the show next week. So that means all next week, right now as you do your new moon wishes, as you process Mercury retrograde and the plan for that, then I want you to also consider Venus, your values and priorities, and get very, very, very clear. Taurus, Venus is in Taurus. She rules Taurus. So this is, she's at home there cultivating her garden as we speak and giving you juice and energy to do that. In this case, because it's Taurus, which is an earth sign, it's going to sextile Jupiter and Uranus, which are both in Pisces, a water sign. So Earth and water work really well together, as we know. Earth will give water a structure. So as your truth and your liberation through Pisces, through this major completion through the zodiac, that's happening to everyone, okay? As that gets processed, in this sextile is an opportunity for your values to take root in Taurus. How deep is that? This is so beautiful, and we have all week to work it. Now, as it as truth and freedom take root in your own real priorities and values and the things that are important to you, it's going to trine Saturn retrograde in Virgo. Trine is the blessings without effort. Now we have two earth signs. We've got Taurus and Virgo. So as Saturn's finishing up its little jaunt through Virgo and finishing up the healing work of your own reality and your own personal structure, Venus, the values of Taurus, is going to come in and say, oh, let's make it beautiful. Let's make it juicy. Let's make it spicy and delicious. That's what that's going to be. That blessing, you have to apply it to get the benefit so you know it's there. Let's work it. We want to work it between your values and your responsibilities are getting together in the earth, getting anchored in this new realm. How beautiful is that? Now, the only challenge is coming up is while Venus is in Taurus, it's going to square Neptune and Aquarius and all of the Taurus planets, Sun, Mercury retrograde, and Venus and Taurus are all going to, are all constantly squaring the Mars and Leo. So we're being tested on our Mars and Leo work, and we're being tested in our healing trinity work with this current energy. And thank God it only lasts a month or two, but this is the test between Taurus and Leo and Taurus and Aquarius. So how are you doing? Is that Mars Leo moving through? Are you getting more centered in who you are and what you want and coming from heart center? Are you loving 
who you've become and who you've cultivated over time, and how's the healing trinity working out? As things get healed, you got to release them. Remember your body and your being and everything is in this moment. Don't let your mind take you back to other times that don't even exist anymore. It's a distraction and a delay for whatever's coming in right now, and we don't want to do that. So the challenges next week are going to have to do with facilitating the healing and finding a place. You know, some people are so attached to their wounds, they don't know how to act when they're finally don't have them anymore and when they're not part of their story and they're not part of their identity anymore i mean who are you when all the wounds have healed and you're really presented with a clean slate well that's what the aries new moon is giving us and spring equinox gives us every year and there's just lots of new energy to tune into so watch those tests the square is a test that means a decision has to be made it means movements happening and while those guys are moving through taurus squaring that mars and leo this is the first test of mars going forward of that new identity and the the love and the passion that you were cultivating through that process. And that's all on the table for next week. So I just want you to keep in mind, for next week, it's the final planet entering into Taurus. So we'll have a month of the sun illuminating that. Remember, Venus and Mercury are moving ahead of her. But now that Mercury is slowing down to move backwards, that order is going to change. And Venus at the moment is still ahead of the game. So she's going through saying, okay, we've got to change the values and priorities before we can change our minds or change our thinking or change our world or our bodies or our physical situation. We've got to get our priorities straight. What's important to you? And this is about really, truly simple, basic, fundamental needs and desires. What's really important to you? We're talking one, two, three. We don't have time for 25 different things that we want to do. Right now we have to simplify and stabilize the basics that hold our lives together and make it work properly. So working on that is really tremendously supported throughout this whole week before we get together later. Now, anybody in the studio have any questions? I don't know. But for now, I want you just tuning in. Aries is fire. Pisces is water. Taurus is earth. We still have some Aquarius planets, which is air. So we have access to all four elements which is pretty delicious and gives you different things to work with. I'm of the mind as a cancer. My moods rule the day. So i got to be in the mood or it doesn't happen. So in this case, if you're in the mood to deal with earth, which is reality, or fire, which is ideas, or, or I guess air is ideas, fire is creativity and getting it moving, and water is flow and your emotions and things. So whatever you're working on, there's something to support that and push you into the next level and get you ready for this full moon in Scorpio, which is going to be pretty potent. So we're we're working it out. We're finishing up the spring equinox, uh, six weeks of that sacred season before we move into Beltane, which is the 1st of May, around the 1st of May. And that's when the planets in the sky hit 15 degrees Taurus. And wherever that is, we get to infuse with some light and love for the summertime and get ready for summer solstice. So that's where we're at, everyone. And if you have any questions, there's lots of articles and free calls and more audios and things. If you just want to Google Kelly M. Beard or Karmic Tools or Lunar Reflections, I'm very easy to track down. And you're more than welcome to finding more information on specifics for you. But this is this is a pretty big turning point kind of month because we have that Saturn Uranus fourth activation. That's pretty big. That's out with the old and with the new and recalibrating our 3D and our imaginations. How are we going to get super creative with setting up our world properly at this new juncture? You know, remember we're back at the American Revolution time, so we can plan for this new base that we are building together as a collective. Very important, juicy. And we all, thank God, have each other. <laughs> Glow lady. I'm wonderful. How are you? Whoa, I think that the audience can actually hear both of us, too. That's a blessing. We're, we're getting pretty good because we're down to, like, the last um, 30 seconds or something like that. And I, I want to find out. We're going to be doing a benefit concert up here on, I guess it's going to be June 12th. What kind of planetary... Um, um, reactions are going to be oh june 12th specifically is the new moon in gemini so that's perfect for community and socializing because gemini loves that and jupiter will have already gotten to aries so everybody will feel excited about new beginnings for a minute and what else is going on those are the big ones Woohoo! way cool yeah mars mars will finally come out of leo that week that'll ease up on some folks but it's going to move into virgo and mess with people there (laughs) 